Hey witches and wanderers, welcome to another short video. I'm Salon of the Two Pondering Pagans. We're gonna have a little bit of a chat about a couple of things. Wanted to share my mobile altar, um, the whole process of how I create it and the tools I bought to go in it and what makes different parts easier to travel with. A couple of ins and outs and tips on that if you're a traveler. Um, and gonna share a little bit of my uh, mobile altar with you and calling of the quarters and the uh, directions. So thanks for tuning in. This is the altar that I have put together that I take with me when I fly, when I drive, travel, all of those things. And it's actually worked out pretty well. So first we have The case. So this case is a um, case logic. It was twenty nine dollars on Amazon. It's lockable, which you don't want to do because it does look similar to a gun case. And if you're flying in TSA, they are going to um, expect that uh, they can get in it. So. Very important there to, to remember that when it comes to cases and things, if you're flying, uh, they cannot be locked inside. So you wanna make sure to leave those unlocked if you're flying. So inside, you see it's a nice little foam. And then there's all these little, let's see if I close, close and get these little sections. They're little um, pieces that look kind of like this. And they're each one of these is one of those pieces all the way across. So these uh, you can pull out, as you can see, I've taken them out in different sections to make room for different sizes of things. Um, for instance, we have my glass jar. I have some musk scents that I got. Um, and then some other um, uh, essential oils like eucalyptus. And I know the content's not as important. Uh, lemongrass. And I use these to kind of make different scents and things uh, when I'm doing my, uh, my uh, stuff. If you're carrying oils in here, you have to be careful. If you were here to smell this, this is all you smell is rose oil because it is spilled all over the phone, but it does smell pretty good. Add some incense. This is where I put my tea lights, if you can see down in there. Um, have some area for long candles right here, which is where my uh, chime candles are. You can see a little teeny pagan plate. And then and here in the corner, you get my athame. Just a relatively cheap athame that I got. And then I stuffed these pieces that I took out back in to hold everything nice and tight. So that is the box um, that I got to put all my stuff in to keep it safe. So um, over here you can see this is the altar setup that I have, and everything in this altar fits in that box except for the chalice, which is, you know, I just pack it separately. So, um, just something to be uh, thinking about. If it's something you're interested in, um, like I said, I think it was a Case Logics. Um, it doesn't have the name on it, but it's kind of peeled off because I've had this for a while. Um, but I know you can find multiple different kinds of these cases online. They're pretty cheap. So, um, there you go. So I'm going to do a easy, quick uh, quarter calling for me and how I like to call. Now when I call my quarters or my directions, um, those are two different things and I process both of them in part of my practice. One is a little bit more from the Druid background, one's a little bit more from the Witchcraft and Wiccan background. So. Um, it involves a little bit of uh, maybe some different things and it does change sometimes I call it a little bit differently I don't hang up on the details like that um, I just uh, do my best to pay respects when I'm doing it in a small area I picture my body and my mind paying uh, attention to those directions in those areas like right now I am facing true north so I do um, have myself organized or situated um, and then I would do a simple call <clears throat> I call 
to the elements and the ancestors of the East. I invite you to in to fill me with the air and breath of life and the knowledge and thought and the lightness that carries our thoughts and our feelings and our fears and hopes and dreams along the air and into the web. May there be peace in the East. To the south of fire, the element that brings creativity and destruction in the same breath, that carries the thoughts and energies straight up in this fiery passion, and the ash that settles back to the earth. The fire that can burn the finger and can destroy the forest, that can also fertilize the land and cook the food. Fire, I welcome you and may there be peace always in the South. And to the West, which brings us water, thought to hold our emotions as it's carved through the earth. The water that fills the container that it's in as best it can. And although it can rage and carry upon and carve the rock over time, it also provides nourishment and is the base of our life. To water, I welcome and invite you. And may there always be peace in the West. And to the north of my body, I invite the earth and the ground that gives the structure to everything that stands upon it, above it, and within it. Without the earth, there would be no tangible touch. You do carve the rivers out to flow upon your structure. You remind us of what is provided and you bring us strength. And to the earth, I invite you in tonight. And may there always be peace in the north. And in the either, or the spirit or the universal source at the center of all things and the outside of all things and everything in between. I invite you to my humble heart and to bring me peace inside. Allow me to bring it in and share it with everything that I do. In the center of life and the spirit, may there always be peace. I invite you in. So for me, when I call my quarters or my circle, regardless of how different it is each time, I don't have anything written for this particular process right now. I do have a few written ones that I like, but uh, that I've written over the years, but just the process of doing it after a meditation really gets my brain into space. And I, Generally, when there's room, like at my home in my witchy area or at our land where we have a sacred grove, um, we physically move and draw the circle as we walk around the path. When I'm in a tighter space or a traveling or maybe I don't want somebody to know what I'm doing, what I'll generally do is picture that bubble emanating out from the center and closing it off as it goes around so that I can do my work. You will find what works for you, um, but just remember that the process, it gets easier as you do it, it means more as you do it, and it resets your brain in a way that really helps you uh, prepare for what it is you're doing and to put up that barrier of protection of whatever is in stays in and whatever is out stays without. One common thing that I do say in a lot of circle casts, depending on what my plan is to do, um, is that may any who enter this circle do so only in perfect love and perfect trust. It's a little bit on the Wiccan side, right? It works, it helps me feel protected. Tonight, I'm not planning on doing anything in my circle that requires a specific protection. Um, however, I do like to use the energy to kind of reinforce my bubble, um, to put that energy back in place, and so that structure will be there with me. Um, so right now my circle is closed, 
and I will open it back up when I'm done. Um, but now that the circle's open, I like to do whatever witchy working that I'm doing, uh, whether that is, um, you know, making a potion or a tincture or um, doing a ritual or invoking or working with a god or goddess, um, I would do that now. So those things for this particular purpose are going to be a different video. Um, I will share some of the ways that I do that. Um, and just, again, important to point out that people are going to do it in different ways. And you will find the way that works best for you, but listen to other people's ideas and thoughts and then play with it yourself. Create a safe space and work it so that you're comfortable and that you understand and feel good about what's happening. It'll be important to you um, and it'll make that system work a lot better. <clears throat> Another thing that's interesting is not all uh, pagans or Wiccans or uh, whatever the case may be will agree what you have to do a circle for. For me, um, I do a circle for pretty much any specific witchy working that I do, creation and um, thought process and diving into things and shadow work, especially things like shadow work or even light work. All of those things for me require the circle cast, but it may not for you. And somebody that you work with may say, oh, that's fooey, you don't need to do that. And some people may say, oh, if you don't, you're opening yourself up to all kinds of stuff. Um, it's what you believe and what you feel is right. So you do you. Keep that up and the more practice you do, the easier it becomes, um, the more comforting it becomes. So now we'll open the circle, which is kind of going in the reverse. So in the physical, when I'm in a large area, I would you know, do kind of the closing wittershins so that's counterclockwise or counter sunwise. Um, but I'm not going to walk it right now because A, the video, B, I'm in a very tight space in this hotel room. Um, so here's what you can do. Uh, again, just like when we started, I want to picture myself in my head and starting in the north and I want to go in the opposite direction. Thank you elements of the north and the earth for coming in and in sharing your time with me and allowing me to learn and see new things. I am forever grateful. May there always be peace in the north. And to the west of water and the elements of fiery sapphire blue, I appreciate and thank you for joining me this evening and for the gifts that you bring every day. May there always be peace in the west. And to the south, that same fiery creation that starts can also end but can start again. You fill my heart with a fire and a passion for the things that I love and enjoy, and I always appreciate you in my daily life. Thank you for joining. May there always be peace in the South. And in the East, of air and thought, the lightness of the feather but the strength of the wing, I appreciate you joining us this evening in all of your glory and knowledge. And may there always be peace in the East. Now the circle is open, but never unbroken. So again, uh, closing the circle is a highly personal thing. Take what people tell you, um, listen to it, try it, see what works for you. The idea of um, finishing out, and I, I, I say it backwards all the time, it's just, you know, from a logical perspective, it's opening the circle at the end, so I'll clarify that. You close your circle when you start, that's creating the circle, and then you open the circle at the end, which lets the circle go. Um, some people, when they end, um, which is again opening the circle, they will just say, um, for, you know, and I hate to say dispatch all of everything they invited. I prefer to kind of do it in a systematic approach, take just as much time appreciating and thanking for being and allowing to go as I do for inviting. Um, so that's just a personal preference for me. But I think it's important that you decide um, how you want to do it in a way that works for you and then also you know do that process on your own. 
and work with people, um, practice it, do it, you know, close off your room, and I think you'll have a good time with it. So I appreciate you checking out this short video of me in my hotel room talking about how I close and open my circle, how I do my casting, uh, just one of the many, many ways, and a little bit about my altar and how I do my mobile altar. So if you have any questions, comments, snide remarks, as long as they're kind and not hurting anybody else directly in the chat or otherwise, please feel free to leave those messages. Um, like and subscribe if you want uh, to see more. So we'll be putting out a lot of content soon. Um, and at this point, uh, I want people to see it, but this has actually been really nice for me. I have really um, got myself back on a track that feels really good. So I um, hope you enjoy it and have a wonderful evening.